Defining Calvinism In spite of many differences of opinion among Calvinists today, Calvinism is generally explained by the acronym TULIP. Philip F. Congdon writes that a tulip is a beautiful flower, but bad theology. The fruit of the flower is appealing. The fruit of the theology is appalling. Works, as an inevitable result, are necessary for salvation. To be fair, classical Calvinists usually object to this by describing the gospel message as not faith plus works equals justification, but faith equals justification plus works. This is no more than a word game. It is best seen in the old Calvinist saying, You are saved by faith alone, but the faith that saves you is never alone. Some of you may never have heard of tulip. Others, though knowing that it has something to do with Calvinism, find it difficult to remember what each letter stands for. Here, in brief, is a summary of common explanations. In each case, in order to avoid the charge that they are not properly stated, they are presented in the words of the major Calvinistic creeds or confessions. T stands for total depravity, that man, because he is spiritually dead to God in trespasses and in sins, taken from Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 and Colossians chapter 2 verse 13, is incapable of responding to the gospel, though able to make other moral choices. The Westminster Confession of Faith declares, Our first parents became dead in sin, and wholly defiled in all the faculties and parts of soul and body, wholly inclined to all evil. Man, by his fall into a state of sin, hath wholly lost all ability of will to all spiritual good accompanying salvation, being altogether averse from that good and dead to sin, is not able by his own strength to convert himself or to prepare himself thereunto. U stands for unconditional election, that God decides on no basis whatsoever but by the mystery of his will to save some, called the elect, and to allow all others to go to hell, even though he could have saved all mankind if he so desired. The canons of Dort declare that some receive the gift of faith from God, and others do not receive it, and it proceeds from God's eternal decree, by which decree he graciously softens the hearts of the elect, however obstinate, and inclines them to believe, while he leaves the non-elect in his just judgment to their own wickedness and obduracy. L stands for limited atonement, that the elect are the only ones for whom Christ died in payment of the penalty for their sins, and that his death is efficacious for no others, nor was intended to be. Dort declares, For this was the sovereign counsel and most gracious will and purpose of God the Father, that the most precious death of his Son should extend to all the elect, all those and those only who were from eternity chosen to salvation. He purchased by his death. I stands for irresistible grace, that God is able to cause whomever he will to respond to the gospel, that without this enabling no one could do so, and that he only provides this irresistible grace to the elect and damns the rest. The Westminster Confession states, All those whom God hath predestinated unto life, and those only, he is pleased in his appointed and accepted time effectually to call, by his word and spirit, out of that state of sin and death, effectually drawing them to Jesus Christ. Yet so, as they come most freely, being made willing by his grace. P stands for perseverance of the saints, that God will not allow any of the elect to fail to persevere in living a life consistent with the salvation that he has sovereignly given them. The Westminster Confession states, They whom God hath accepted in his beloved, effectually called and sanctified by his Spirit, 
can neither totally nor finally fall away from the state of grace, but shall certainly persevere therein to the end, and be eternally saved. This perseverance of the saints depends not upon their own free will, but upon the immutability of the decree of election. William Cunningham speaks for most Calvinists when he writes that no synod or council was ever held in the church whose decisions, all things considered, are entitled to more defense and respect than the Synod of Dort. With all due respect, I would suggest that the Bible alone is our authority, not the beliefs of either John Calvin or Jacobus Arminius or any council, synod, assembly, or creed. In the following pages, the points of tulip are compared with the Bible, one point at a time and in order.